Now you guys, what's in this little envelope can change your lives forever. Your decision is, are you gonna let it be for better or for worse? Let's go. One stacker on a journey to find silver. Hey guys, International Stacker here. Thanks for being back. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Please subscribe. Like 90% of people that watch my videos are not subscribed. It's crazy. And uh, please help support the censorship. Many of the topics I talk about, YouTube doesn't like for one reason or another. So you can do that by simply gently tapping or smashing the like button, whatever you like. Um, and also leaving a comment um, helps with engagement. But in here is something that can literally change your lives. And I'm gonna bring up some more information here in a second, but I wanna show you what's in this envelope and let you make the decision on what you wanna do. But first off, I do wanna also say a major shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is Apollo Silver and Gold. We'll talk more about them later, but thank you Apollo for sponsoring this video. Here we go. Oh, it's sealed. Oh my gosh! Okay. How many letters? Here we go, folks. Does anyone know what it is? I'll give you a second to guess. Ladies and gentlemen, I just became a multi trillionaire in Zimbabwe. The sad thing is, this is worth nothing. This, some boulevards, worth nothing. This, some Thailand Dong, <laughs> worth nothing. How about some more, more boulevards? How about some Lebanese Lira? All that is literally worth nothing. This is literally representing millions and billions, and now even trillions of dollars in Zimbabwe dollars, and they're all worth nothing. Let me switch over to the graphs and show you how this can happen to America and even you. So jumping back on here, um, I simply searched U.S. inflation over the past week. And there are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of articles just in the last week about inflation in the United States. So before we make it too boring, I just want you to see this first. So first off, this is inflation uh, per year. Now, of course, if you go to shadow stats or other sources, uh, they believe, a lot of folks believe the inflation rate is much higher, and I even do, but what I'm going to show you is what's officially reported. So this is what's officially reported, so just imagine how much worse it is. But you can see here back in 2011, it was 3%, then we're hovering between 1 and 2, blah, blah, blah. 2021, the year of the beer flu, um, the, the C word I don't dare say because they're still censoring videos for that. Isn't that crazy? Um, but 5.3% in 2020 or 2021. What you should know is we set a record in April, we set an uh, record in May, we set a record in June, we set a record in July, and we own or tied the record, and we backed off 0.1 of a percent. And folks are celebrating, saying, "See, we're fine. Inflation's not horrible." But according to their numbers, in previous years we've been between under two mostly, and even under one. And now they're celebrating because 0.1%. Folks, this is the hidden tax on your money. And I really liked how this article uh, put it together. This is talking about how inflation erodes your money. Okay. So when it comes to your finances, inflation can be a silent wealth killer. Uh, if you've all watched me for long enough, you know I call it the silent tax, the secret tax. Actually, the main thing I say is the hidden tax. So this is an example of 100 pounds, right? It's British pounds over 10 years at 1, 2, and 5% inflation. But you see initially 
um, it's worth a hundred, and then it starts uh, inflating away, and then just a few years later, so this is just after ten years, um, that original hundred is now worth fifty-seven. But it's worse than that, folks. This is showing small inflation per year and not compounding it. It's actually worse than you think. So if we go back here, five point three percent this month. That means you're getting the same pay you've been getting. But all of a sudden, um, inflation is increasing, your buying power is decreasing, and you can buy a fraction of what you could even the month before for the same price. Look at used cars prices. Look at gas prices. L look at everything you interact with daily. I mean, inflation is here, folks. And I believe the way, like Lynette Zhang sa says, to protect yourself is with a shield. And shields are made of metal, which is physical gold and silver. Now, I've been stacking a ton. I just did an epic, uh, uh, epic unboxing of two kilos of silver. That video is coming out soon, and I'm going to show you. It's epic. That video is epic, so don't miss that one when it comes. But why am I stacking silver? To protect myself. But I also believe, with the turbulence that we've had in the economy and the markets and the turbulence, I think, to come, if I believe physical gold and silver are going to be a winner, I also think there's going to be winners in the mining uh, companies. And this is another continuation on looking at mining companies that I think might have a huge opportunity. So the f company I wanted to cover today is e Apollo Silver and Gold. This is a very unique company in terms of their business model. Now, when I'm looking at companies, I like to look at ownership. I like to look at, you know, different aspects about the company that I think might make it stand out. And this is one of them. Uh, in the next few months, and if you go to their latest news. They talk a little bit about this and other things that are coming. Uh, they've got three things which I like. First is they're doing a bunch of drilling pro projects across their silver mines, okay? So they know what their silver mines produced in the past according to historical data, because they're all historical. And if you go here, they've got mining in California and mining uh, areas set up in Arizona, which are historical. So now they're gonna do modern drilling and see the silver they actually have there. Uh, the next thing I like is they're issuing what's called an NI43-101 report on their resources. And that's going to basically bring their historical silver resources up to standard code and legitimize that, you know, it's thought that there's over 100 million ounces of silver in the ground that this company technically owns. And then three, the third thing I like is they're really looking into making additional acquisitions across North America to build their project portfolio. Now, this is a junior mining company. And before I go a little bit more into the company, I just wanted to show you um, their, see, their focus is becoming a mid-tier silver producer. Okay, so they're definitely a, uh, a junior. But again, they've got the Calico District. You ever been to the Calico Ghost Town? I went there growing up. It was amazing. Uh, if you live anywhere close to this area, take your family and kids to the Calico Ghost Town. Uh, also, too, um, Arizona, so that was California. Here's some uh, projects they have. They have three uh, claims here uh, as well as in Arizona. But this is a junior mining company, which means there's obviously risk. There's risk in anything, but there can be huge rewards. And here's why I think this one's positive. They've just restructured the entire company two months ago, uh, completely under the radar, did it extremely quickly. They raised over 50 million Canadian um, and it's basically, they did that quickly due to what I believe is their folks that they have in leadership, leadership and management, which we'll get to in a second. So some of their investors include Eric Sprott, a billionaire, Jupiter Investments, they're a pension fund, um, Crest Cat Capital's one, um, who else? Uh, oh, Carlo Savelli, who's another billionaire. Billionaires put their money in things that are going to make them more money, you guys. I mean, that's what I believe. And, you know, mining is really a business that either succeeds or fails. And that's why I really look strongly into who's investing and also who's leading. And right now, uh, I want to hit on Andrew Bowring. Uh, Andrew has a ton of history since 2011. Uh, he was involved in CapEx Iron Corp. Uh, which was a TSX Venture 50 company, meaning that the Toronto Stock Exchange chose it as one of the best companies. He was also in Millennial uh, Lithium Corp, which the same thing was a TSX Venture 50 company. Uh, and that was acquired by Gangfeng Lithium. 
Uh, he was part of uh, M2 Cobalt Corp, which was purchased uh, by, what is it, Gervos? I think they're called Gervos Global. Prime Mining Corp was a big one, another TSX 50 company. And that one had a mine, that one had a market cap of $10 million and went to $375 million. That's like 35, 3,600% increase. American Lithium, another one. So what's my point here? He's been involved in a million different companies and had multiple billionaire investors, including Robert Fried, uh, Friedland. Robert Friedland is literally a mega billionaire. So that's a little bit about Andrew. Um, we've got Tom. He's the president, CEO, and director. Again, over 30 years experience, just like Andrew. I mean, just look at all these folks. Simon Clark, a 25 year uh, experience. Look, M2 Cobalt, oil. Um, I mean, if you just look at everybody, it's epic. It's epic. Great team. That's That doesn't make all my decisions for me, but that's something that I look for. Now, the key thing you want to keep in mind uh, when you're looking at companies like this and who's investing in it, these high caliber people and billionaire investors get involved because they want to make quick money. Okay. Um, they know they can make fortunes on junior mining stocks if they are junior mining companies if they go to like mid-level. Um, and it, let me just say right now, I'm not a financial advisor. These are just my personal opinions, okay? I'm not a financial advisor. Read my description description below. Um, but they look to make money for explosive upside. Now, the one thing you got to understand with junior miners is they're not looking by themselves to grow into the next, you know, 100 million, 200 million, 300 million uh, company per se. Their best way of progressing that company and making it lucrative is selling uh, to a bigger company at a premium. So uh, often you'll have smaller mining projects that are uh, established, developed somewhat, and then sold to a big boy, or if I'm gonna be politically correct, a big girl mining company, you know, to take it to the next level. And then everyone who is involved make a ton of money. And that includes investors, shareholders, et cetera, et cetera. Now it can go the other way, obviously, um, and it can go the wrong way and you lose money. Uh, my goal and your goal and everyone's goal is not to lose money. So that's why it's important to do this research when looking into companies. Uh, another thing about uh, Apollo Gold and Silver is uh, they purchased their projects from Pan American Silver, um, which is a legendary company. And for the first time ever, there are two projects they own. And again, they've got the Calico District and the Silver District. Um, they're the first company I think of ever to ever own both of these projects, which are, look how close they are to each other. They're extremely close to each other, um, which I like. And that's when I start looking into infrastructure, right? So first off, first time these have ever been owned by under common ownership. It's over 13,000 acres of um, land under control. It's well-placed relative to the infrastructure. So they have private roads, um, there's power, electric power within five kilometers of the property. That's an expensive one that, cause that's, that can get expensive quickly. So this is exciting. They've got the infrastructure. Uh, they've compiled a team of top tier folks in the industry. They've got, uh, assets. They've raised a lot of money for this undertaking. Another important thing about the team, besides the extensive experience and exploration and development is they've got experience across different technical aspects, operations, as well as financial disciplines, which are important because you need somebody to take care of the money. And they have hit the ground running, folks. They have a detailed plan to realize value on the Calico and the AZ Silver properties. And again, here's a little 3D uh, rendering that you can look in here. If you, if you know where Barstow is, California, they're close to Barstow. I guess the important things here besides their infrastructure, besides the management, is that the company literally um, has 102 million ounces of silver. And if you look at the price they paid for this project and you average that out, that equals 40 cents an ounce. Boy, would I like to get silver for 40 cents an ounce. And I'm sure you would too. But anyways, guys, I just thought I would share with you this company. Again, I've been on a search for a long time for the best companies to give you the best ROI on investment. So. If you have no physical gold and silver, by all means, stack that silver and gold to the sky. But if you stacked a lot like I have, or you're looking for other opportunities to maximize, I do think they're out there. And this one is definitely interesting. Let's bring up the chart real quick. All right, we got the chart here and here's their ticker. Uh, so let's 
I like to look at max first. So they were at 91 cents, five year, one year, year to date. And look at that uh, activity there, that volume. So their volume substantially increased over the past month, five day. So, I mean, this is interesting to me. It's at 65 cents. Um, they've had a little bit of a downturn, about four cents, which might be a good entry point. They've got all this news coming out. What do you guys think? I think this might be an opportunity. I'm definitely going to look more into it. I'm definitely interested in Apollo Silver Corporation. And really, it's called Apollo Silver and Gold. And I'm curious on what you all think. But there's the... 52 week training range from 33 cents to a dollar. Um, so we got like 33, about 33% to the upside of their total recent max upside, but good news coming out. Good information. Let's look at one of their last updates here. August, September. Independent technical review provides increased confidence in historic resource calculations. Paul launches name change and launches new website. Oh, they just changed their name. Okay, look at here. <clears throat> Sorry, it's just getting deep and in, deeper into this. So their last uh, on the Waterloo project, their last news. Uh, Pan America 2013 did an inferred study that inferred 102, nearly 103 million ounces. So that's 20 grams per ton of AG, which is silver. That's epic. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. But I got my eyes on this one. Anytime I see a junior uh, company that could go mid-tier, that's exciting. It's usually pretty explosive. A lot of big names are investing in it. A lot of big names are deleting this. And uh, this is definitely on my watch list. Let me know if you like this type of content. I just released a video of uh, buying silver in a Chicago LCS or local coin shop. So check that out. I'm going to be in Detroit soon. We're going to have a bunch of fun, a lot more content coming. Again, evidently now I'm a multi-million, a billion, and trillionaire, and it's all thanks to inflation. So let me know in the comments below what you think um, about this company and the other companies I've covered. Some of the companies have done pretty well since I covered them. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Are you focused on mining stocks? Are you focused only on physical? By all means, get that physical to the sky, uh, but then that's what I did. And then I started looking for other opportunities. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. And I guess I'll say, catch you on the next one. Woo! One stacker.